like to do a check-in, make sure everybody's in good health. Uh, let me just say, first of all, we learned last night, like most of you all did, uh, in reference to the delay. And I says to folks that I'm not trying to read anything into this, except for we are ready to move ahead. We said that from day one when we completed uh, our uh, consent decree. Uh, we spent hours upon hours working together, uh, this team and others who are part of uh, the negotiations along with the DOJ. And we believe that what we crafted was something that Baltimore needs. When we think about the 163 page report, uh, we thought that there were some relevant points there. Uh, but what we do know is that we have done some things as it relates to uh, what was in the consent decree. And what we tried to do was make sure we crafted it to include some of the work that's already been done. For example, you already know that we've put body cameras on our um, police officers, that when it comes to moving our folks from one place to the other as it relates to uh, riding in our vans, that that straps inside of those um, vans now are there. We also know that we've begun some of the interactions with the community that needs to take place. But you know, these are some of the high profile things that people often turn to when they're looking at consent decrees. But we also know that inside of the consent decree that we put together are some things that need to be done. Developing and enhancing that relationship with our community is important. How we go about doing that through our training is essential. And as well as some of the technology that needs to take place in our department. It's essential. And so while we're not trying to read anything into uh, this delay, what we're saying is that we're prepared to move ahead. And we would like to move ahead as quickly as we can. We do know that on April 7th that there is time for more community uh, participation. And so we're urging our community advocates to be sure to be there to have their voices heard. And so again, um, we're continuing to work as though we're moving ahead because we believe that the consent decree is the right thing for Baltimore. A 163 page report, as many of you I'm sure have read, uh, indicates that there is a great need. Commissioner, did you want to share? Mm -hmm. So Mayor, I'll be brief, and I spoke to many of you this morning. Reform within our organization uh, goes forward. Uh, there, there's not a delay in our internal efforts to continue to get better with the community, with the crime fight, and for those issues that the mayor addressed that don't necessarily land on the front page of a newspaper or appear at the top of the 6 o'clock news, but the technology issues, the training, the hard work that's behind the scenes with any reform effort, uh, that will continue to go on. The reforms in the last couple of years uh, are, are many, and they'll continue to go forward, and we look forward to, to getting better with our community. Uh, let me take a moment also to thank David Ralph, who is our city solicitor, who's t who worked with this team and the president of the city council who had an opportunity to review our consent decree and uh, have had conversations with the city council members, and I think that we're all on one accord. We want to move forward. And so, again, I thank everybody for being a part of that, but more importantly, uh, we look forward to continuing to move ahead, and we will continue to do the work that needs to be done. So uh, we're open for questions. Can we ask David Ralph a question? Surely. Have, it, does the city intend to file an opposition to the request for the delay? Jane, I appreciate that question. Um, Come to the mic. Sure. Excuse me. Mm -hmm. I, Just my little toe. <laughs> <laughs> Just a little bit. Jane, I appreciate that question. But as you know, um, we're not going to comment on uh, anything that we plan to do when we file it, if we do you will know, um, so we, we, we don't give advance notice of, of doing things like that. I, I guess the question is, do you have to file something? I no, know. so if you look at the, at the um, motion, uh, the DOJ makes it clear that the police department and the city oppose it. Uh, there is no requirement that you file a, in opposition to something like that. Uh, whether we will, um, as I said, if we do, you will you will know it when we do. Mayor Q, um, if the DOJ finds a way to back out of this completely with the new administration, are you committed to uh, carrying out uh, this consent decree with an independent monitor and everything on your own, paid for by the city? Well, let me just say that we're committed to moving forward, and uh, we, you know that there are a lot of costs attached to this, and we did budget 
uh, for the monitor that's already in, in the budget. I think that's $1.5 million uh, for the monitor. Um, we're committed to this consent decree because we believe that what it does, it helps us to build the trust in the community uh, with the police department. And the, what is inside of that consent decree is absolutely what we need to not only reform the police department, but to gain that trust that we need in our communities. Because as you well know, you know, crime is not something that we get to solve by ourselves. It's the relationships and so forth that are developed across the board. And so we think it's important. Madam Mayor, following that, if the feds do decide to back off on this, why should city residents have confidence that you will follow through with the reforms that are outlined in the consent decree? One, because we're not sitting back waiting. We've already done some of those reforms, and we continue to work on them. We just know that along with the consent decree comes additional dollars in support. Like, I've already had commitment from this, the state. We put $2 million in the budget for uh, the DOJ. We've got uh, some Ford Foundation grants coming uh, for the DOJ. I sat on the Hill just last week with all my congressional partners and asked them for additional funding uh, for this uh, consent decree. So, no, um, I'm asking the citizens of Baltimore to have faith that we will continue this work because we do think it's important and because we do want to transform our police department and we do want to make sure that we're operating at the highest level. Without a, without a consent decree, how challenging would it be for you to, to get this money set aside every year from here on out to, to finish what the consent decree... Let me just say, what we've got set aside so far is not nearly enough. But what we do have set aside is enough money to, to get this moving. And I believe that the commitment of the state will probably be ongoing. And when we talk about what's in that 163-page report, you know, it's hard to deny that these kinds of reforms don't need to take place in the city of Baltimore. So we're absolutely committed, committed on behalf of the citizens of Baltimore and, and on behalf of the police department as well as our, our uh, other elected officials. Mayor or, or David, can, can you kind of guide us through what your understanding is of the options that are <clears throat> ahead? So if the DOJ says we're out, um, this is in the hands of a federal judge, am I correct? I guess the question is, could the judge sign this agreement without the so it, prior, prior, prior uh, cooperation of this agency? So I, while I don't like to speculate about what could and should or <laughs> would happen, could be. could be, let me just say this. This is a litigation like any other litigation. There are parties on both sides. There's a plaintiff who, in this case, is the United States government. Uh, the defendants in the case are the police department and the city. Uh, if, in fact, the, and, and when we say back out, I'm not exactly sure what you mean by that. If you know, this, this um, request for continuance is not necessarily any kind of back out. In their motion, I will say that they do continue to talk about their commitment to reforming the police department. So I, I wouldn't want to suggest that they're wanting to do something other than what they've said in the papers. And might I add that they've said before in the hearing when Judge Bedar asked about um, their position and, and the position of the United States government on the consent decree. As you know, there was a public hearing, initial hearing. At that time, uh, the United States government uh, answered questions by the judge regarding their commitment to move forward. As recently as last week, I was on the phone with the attorneys for the Department of Justice, and we were talking about preparing, and we were preparing for this hearing coming up on Thursday. Um, so what changed? Uh, you know, I can only take what they've said in the motion at its face value. Um, but in terms of process, a judge will do whatever the judge will do. The parties have rights to continue to further the litigation or not. Um, a judge cannot insist that a party continue in the case if they don't want to continue in the case. However, um, there are other things a court may, may decide to do, and I, I don't want to speculate as to what the judge may or may not do. I think Judge Bedar is an experienced jurist and will decide it as, as, as he sees fit. But just to continue that, if the Justice Department files a motion to dismiss, aren't you in a bad spot? You can't say, oh, no, please keep suing. No. Well, no. Look, no. The, so 
how will you said they file a motion to dismiss? Well, a plaintiff doesn't file a motion to dismiss their own case. So they would have to seek consent of the city to resolve the case. That's typically how it goes. So you don't follow. We, we could file a motion to dismiss. But we're not in that position. I mean, that's we're, not the position we're, that we're, we're not at. Yes, right. No, we're not we're, at that point in the case, and we're not. We're certainly not planning to file a motion. To I think that's what made this particular consent decree so easy to put together. I mean, not easy because this was 14 to 16 hour days for about 40 days. But the ability to get everybody on the same page came quicker. If you think about what happened in New Orleans with, you know, half the police force that we have, it took them 14 months. And in Ferguson, with 50 police officers, it took them 13 months. We were able to craft this agreement in 40 days because we agree that reform needs to take place. We agree that we need to build a relationship between the police department and the community. We agree that technology is important to our, uh, to our police department. And we, we believe that how we handle mental health cases and so forth need to be reformed. That's our agreement. So we're not far apart in terms of the DOJ and what we think needs to be done. So we're certainly not trying to back out. We want to move forward. Mayor, I'd like to ask you just to, to, for more of a broader perspective of philosophy. Um, I think why we're asking these questions is not necessarily what's in the motion, but what has come from the U.S. Attorney General, Jeff Sessions, where he has clearly stated we're going to pull back from this kind of litigation. So he has equated um, reform and scrutiny of police officers with crime. How would you respond to that? Well, again, when I go back and look at the 163-page report, you know, part of that is cooperation and relationships, and we clearly know that. You know, even when you think about some of the activities that are occurring in neighborhoods, you know, criminal activity, it is the relationship that you have with the police department that will help you to resolve some of those problems. We need those relationships in our community. That's building trust, trust between the community and trust between the police department. And we believe that that trust has been eroded over the years based on certain behaviors by certain police officers, and that's certainly not to say all police officers. And this you know, addresses areas that I believe that even the police department itself would want to reform. When you talk about the de-escalation, for example, of violence, that's something that we all want to focus on. And so how we treat people who are mentally ill, I mean, how we treat people who have issues, I think all of us agree that reform needs to take place. But for me, it really is, you know, even when you talk about the stop searches, you know, those are things that the police department is already working on, but those are things that were also cited in the 163-page report. Mayor, ultimately, if the Department of Justice is in this half-heartedly, does that make the reform job that much harder? I mean, do you, do you need them as a partner if they're not committed to this? Well, let me just say that the what it does do is it opens up the a greater opportunity for monies to provide some of the assistance that we will need. For example, when you think about the technology that's needed in all police departments, and certainly in our police department, that's a big ticket item. Um, certainly if the Justice Department, uh, and they have provided some assistance in, in, in years past. So we want to make sure that we can go to the private sector, that we can go to the public sector, that we can get the monies that are needed. But that just means that for us, you know, we'll just have to look at budgetary issues. You know, how do we address some of these issues? But at the same time, we're committed to making the change in this police department that needs to be made. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, everybody.